for our next four speakers, you're in for a real treat, because I guarantee you'll see all of them in congressman or senator or even governor roles in the next 10 years. You're going to see the rising stars of the conservative movement of this region. And the next person I get to introduce was the youngest woman ever elected in the Oklahoma State Legislature, pushing for limited government, conservative principles, cutting spending, and real common sense reforms. Elected at the age, get this, 21. Amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, help me introduce Elise Hall. Good afternoon. If you had asked me at the age of 20 if I would be elected to the Oklahoma House of Representatives at the age of 21, and then if you had told me that I would then go on to become part of the speaker's leadership team at the age of 24, I would have laughed and said, really? I'm going to do that? Because to me, that seemed crazy. But it was a conversation with my dad that kind of just changed my perspective on things. My dad and I were having a conversation in January of 2010 in which we were talking about who was running for our local house seat in Oklahoma City. We were having a conversation about you know, the community ties that the area had and needed and uh, my family's history in the area. And we were talking about who was running and all that. My dad said, you know, you should run for office. And I was like, really? You think I should run for office? Well, that's ridiculous because number one, it would be way too hard. Number two, it would cost way too much money. And number three, I'm way too young because no one would ever vote for somebody my age. My family um, was raised in a small business. My dad, when he was in college, um, started a lawn company in order to pay for college. And he ended up doing that for 27 years. So basically from the age of eight or nine until I was a senior in college, I grew up working alongside my dad. So from that, I understood the conservative principles of limited government in order that businesses can th strive to make money because that's what they're there to do in order to make a profit. But the government should not be in the way. So from that, my dad and my parents and my mom taught me what it means to be a conservative. Whenever um, my dad said, you know, Elise, you should think about running for office, and I laughed and I said he was crazy, a couple weeks later, my dad and I were having a conversation, and I just thought, the more you think about it, the more times I kept thinking, oh, okay, well, what if I did run for office? What would that look like? And I finally got up the courage to tell my parents, hey, so I'm thinking, you remember that time you jokingly said I should do that? Well, I'm actually thinking about doing it. And so for the next month, I did an exploratory campaign and asked a lot of questions of people in my community. I asked questions of business leaders, education leaders, my pastor and asked them the questions of, if I ran, could I win? And what's my greatest asset? When I got to um, a guy that was the top, at that time, the top elected conservative in the state of Oklahoma, um, and, and that was in 2010, and since then he's no longer the top conservative elected because in 2010, Oklahoma became the reddest state in the nation with a statewide sweep of all elected um, offices, and then we have a supermajority in the House and the Senate. But I asked him, I said, what is my greatest asset? And he said, Elise, your greatest asset is that you don't see the impossibility of what you're about to do, but rather <laughs> you see the possibility of it. And I said, okay. I said, well, if I ran, could I win? And he said, yeah. He said you could win. He said, but you're going to have to work twice as hard as anyone else in this race because you're 21. And I said, okay. Because as I was working alongside my dad and my mom in our business, they taught me the value of hard work and how no matter what, you don't look at the impossibility of something, but you look at the possibility of something. You don't look at the obstacle, but you look at the option of succeeding in something. But you have to do it through hard work, and you have to do it with excellence. So when I decided to actually run for office, when I ran at the age of 21, I wasn't running necessarily because that was my lifelong goal and dream to become a state representative at the age of 21. In fact, it wasn't. But I ran because I wanted to be able to make a difference. Because you see, my district is a very conservative district. In fact, I don't think there will probably ever be somebody that's not conservative elected to my house seat. But you know what? I could have waited until I was 30, 40, 50, or 60 years old to run for office. But the reason I ran when I was 21 is because I wanted to be able to make a difference for my generation. I wanted to be able to stand up and say that I was part of creating monumental workers' compensation reform, 
and lowering taxes and making sure that parents had the right tools to best decide how to educate their kids. And I was part of making sure that we had limited government so that small businesses can thrive. I ran because I wanted to stand up for my generation because I saw a lot of people sitting down at my age. I want to live in the Oklahoma I live in at the age of 30, 40, 50, and 60 because I want to make a difference for my generation, not just the generation behind me. That's why I got involved when I was 21, so I can make a difference now. So what happens if you're my age in this room? You gotta stand up. You can't just be sitting around thinking, oh, okay, well, I'll think about running for office or getting involved when I'm 30 or when I have an established career because I was still in college when I ran for office. I didn't graduate until a few months ago. That was kind of a long story. But you know what? If you're my age, you have to do what Alex, Alex Smith said a few minutes ago, and that is you have to get out of your comfort zone. Are you standing? Are you the type of person that doesn't look at the impossibility of something, but you rather you look at the possibility of something? Look at the possibility of doing something and doing something hard and working hard to attain it. Our generation needs you to stand up because if we don't stand up, we're not gonna be able to live in the Oklahoma, the Missouri, the Kansas, the Arkansas, or the United States of America we want to live in when we're 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years old. So if you're not my age and you're in this room, meaning you're older, make sure that you're encouraging people my age to stand up. Because in order for us to live in the places we want to live in and have the right conservative values in place, we need to encourage other folks to stand up. We need you. I wouldn't be standing here if it wasn't for a group of about 10 to 15 people that in 2010 stood behind a 21-year-old, texted her encouragement, prayed for her, and wrote her checks and supported her and said, Elise, I believe in you. I believe that you can run for office and you can be successful, and I believe in who you are. My generation needs you because they need your encouragement and they need your challenge. So what are we going to do? We're going to join together. We're going to stand up so that we can make a difference to, as Alex Smith said earlier, authentic conservatism. Because together, we can make a difference. Thank you.